the captain, the pirate captain. Our captain? Oh, captain, my captain? No, the, uh, sorry, the pirate hunter captain, the, uh, the untamed wilder captain. Oh, He's not a pirate. The... Why do I keep calling him a pirate? He's emphatically not a pirate. Sort of diametrically opposed even to piracy. Rose by any other name would smell just... Haven't smelled many pirates, have you? Why would you? Necessity. The islands of the Scrimshaw Archipelago, disputed territory between the two greatest military powers in the world today, Calamine in the north and the Untamed Wilds in the south. No one knows why neither empire dares to throw its full might into pacifying Scrimshaw's pirate-infested waters. Perhaps they have too much to lose from direct conflict with each other, or perhaps there is too much to gain from letting the pirates run wild. You are pirates, sailing aboard the Dodgy Jammer, under the command of Captain Rinald Forspoken. One month ago, your crew took in the cargo of a small merchant vessel, cotton textiles, perfumes, and tropical fruits, and sold it off at Port Lilywhite. But the golden supplies that bought you did not last. And tonight, you've gone to bed with frustration in your heart and scarcely a crust of bread in your belly. In the depths of the night, in the bilges of the jammer, you awaken to the sound of cannon fire and the ringing of the alarm bell. Uh, roll initiative. Oh, Jesus. Just <laughs> throwing us right in, aren't you? Yeah, I've always wanted to do in media's res. <laughs> All right, well, that's a nat 20, so uh, I got a 19. All right, as a, as a as an elf, uh, there's a good shot that you were not actually asleep. Mm. I'm also as, an elf. as elves only spend four, four hours uh, meditating. Uh, four hours of sleep, and it's, it's really more of like a trance. Than uh than a God, I'm very envious. Powers and initiatives. Okay, I have a plus nine. Oh yeah, I do have dark vision. I got a twenty-four for initiative. Jesus. Nice. So you got a nat twenty, but because of your bonus, that's a nineteen, and you got a way less than a twenty, and you got a twenty-four. Hacks. Correct. All hacks. <laughs> All right. So going first, Eskal, uh, you wake up in the bilges of the ship. Uh, what sort of, uh, where, how, how do you imagine, uh, your character, uh, where's he sleeping exactly? Like, uh, does he sleep in a bunk? Does he sleep in, um... I think you're in a hammock. A nice hammock hanging from the, from the ceilings? Yeah. Swaying um, with the waves? Yeah, but, you know, meditating. Yeah. they don't. So, That's yeah, in, in a well, hammock in the bilges, I guess. I didn't even know people slept in the bilges. I thought that was for rats no that's uh well i guess technically this isn't the bilges is it no this is the cargo hold uh that makes way more sense <laughs> i didn't even know they had cars in this setting how do they know that they go anyway so you wake up in the cargo hold you have heard cannon fire and there is a bell ringing on the top deck uh, around you uh your fellow crew members uh also wake up from their various uh corners uh rudimentary bunks and hammocks uh, all around. You can hear shouting from the top deck. I'm going to hastily throw on my armor, my coat, and my sword belt, grab my bow, and head upstairs. Okay. You are on the lowest level of the boat, except for the bilges. Thank you. Uh, you know that uh, the ladder to the front is in the fore uh, part of the ship from there. There's a, a ladder that leads to the trap door in the front cabin. Okay. Uh, I have 30 feet of movement speed, so how far can I get from where I was? Well, um, five foot just... squares. No, did you just drop me? Yeah, I dropped you where I where I, where I I figured you would be. Okay. All right, you're so heading then... towards the back. Uh, if you want to go to the front, the ladder is in the front of the ship. I'm sorry, I'm confused then by the... This is the front. Yep, that's where I was headed. Okay, so I don't know if it's just... Yeah, you're heading south by my reckoning. That's because I was uh, trying to get be... back to where you started me so that I could accurately yeah. count spaces. That was right there. Yeah. Okay, that's... so literally one, two. That's the ladder, or that's... Okay, that's the ladder. Sorry. And uh, as a rogue, you should also be able to dash as a bonus action. So really, if you do that, you've got 60 feet. Okay, Um. so making it to the ladder, and then I'm up. That was only about 30... Oh, wait, uh, 20 feet. Yep, 
So you get up to the ladder. I would say, la I'll, I'll call the ladder um, difficult terrain, you know, so you burn twice as much to move the 10 feet up the ladder. Okay. So then then I have 20 remaining feet if I'm dashing. If you're, what if do you're I doing see when I press the ladder? Uh, what you see when you press the ladder is uh, another uh, sort of chamber filled with somewhat more, more comfortable beds uh, of other members of the ship. Uh, it's it's fairly egalitarian on this ship, so people rotate through the good beds, if they so choose. Um, today, apparently, it is Ham, Skip, and Thrug's turns in the big beds. Together? No, in the in the in the multiple big beds. Thrug actually kind of has to. Thrug is a is a is a extremely large orc, um, and he he kind of has to have a large bed. But yeah, you pop up through a um, a trapdoor, uh, oh. and you can see more of your fellow crew members sort of like shaking off the sleep and getting out of bed, and you can hear banging on the door to the open deck just here. Okay, I'm gonna take a second. If I have I have what twenty more feet of movement, we said. Yes. Um, does that and translate into? Action. I would like to spend time yelling at the other crew members to speed them up because it seems like danger is imminent. And that feels like something that you'd take the time to do. It. Yep. Uh, um, Skip cowers a little bit. Skip is a grung. He is a frogman. Ham is ostensibly human, but nobody's really certain. Uh, he just gives you a solemn nod and pulls a blade out from underneath his pillow. And Thrug reaches to where his club is. Uh, okay. He reaches past the club in his bleary, bare wakefulness grabs a hold of the bedside table by the leg and hefts it like it was his club. Fabulous. Uh, I will take my remaining 20 feet of movement and I'm about 15 or 20 feet from the door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stands to reason. And you uh, have an it, action. Was there anything to, like, hide, like, post behind or take, like, partial cover behind? Like, the bed oh, over here? Absolutely. Uh, you, you have some options. Oh. First of all, this directly in front of you is the mast. Oh. It's, it's, Great. The, it's the four mast. It goes all the way up and holds the sails in the front of the ship. Five feet back and kind of off to the side, so it's sort of hiding me from view of the door, but not enough that I can't, like, peek around. Uh, and I guess I'll just ready yeah, yeah, a bow yeah. and arrow. You will not be the first thing that anyone busts through seas, and they will have to expend effort to find you, yes. Cool. Um, and then I'll just ready my bow and point it at the door. Yeah, so if you're doing a hide action, you can roll stealth to sort of have, like, a baseline DC that anybody who comes into the room needs to see you i'll do that then all right because then i can shoot them and they, they say ow mm -hmm. where'd that come from instead of just ow well if you shoot and... them they will see you but they will not be able to see you before you shoot them yeah. if you roll well yeah and i'm rolling stealth okay yes i got 16. a 16 it's not bad you have to roll better than average to see that okay and that's it for your turn zaliri yes wakes up as well at roughly the same time uh in a different part of the ship it seems like you have as a caster your own room well so I, I, isn't that not, nice? I need to put up my research in private yes absolutely yeah or, or are these are, are these stairs yeah those are stairs uh and those stairs lead to the high quarters uh where the captain and his his sort of like direct advisors sleep okay so it doesn't go directly to the deck no, 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 no. Then I'd like to, well, start moving towards the stairs, but along the way, I would like to knock on this gentleman's wall, uh, wall and get, like, get him up. Ivan, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the cook. Yep, so you, you go past him. One, two, I'd say that's like three. That's uh, that's 15 feet of movement to get there. You you knock on his wall. What do you shout at Ivan Ornery? What is he like? Is he a human or is he a dwarf? Uh, he's a human. He's a human. He's a human from the Northlands. Okay. Ivan, get up! Uh, uh, Cannons! You're very rude. Alarm. You're very rude. You're very rude. It is rude to waken people. So, the alarm is being rude. And the cannons. <laughs> uh, Look at that. Oh, another pirate has gone to capture us. Well, they never kill the cook. I'm going back to sleep. Evan, if you do not get up right now, I will thunder wave you out of the ship. <sighs> and he gets up, and he's not wearing much. You should, oh, you should probably, you should probably run. Just short cocking it. <laughs> All right, so you make another move. Yes, to the stairs. Okay. 
Um, as you step actually right here, uh, you can see moonlight filtering down through the hatchway, which is in the ceiling just here. That is yeah. where uh, things are sort of lowered into the hold. Um, mm. And you can see a bunch of people running and standing on the hatchway underneath. You have visual continuity on these people. You do see a tiny little dribble of blood and just like a hand that is laying across the hatchway uh, okay. and the blood dripping down. And then the stomping of heavy boots heading northwards towards where you know the door is to, mm. well, actually the room that uh, um, that Esgal is currently in. Mm. Uh, is, so is there only the hand? So no, you can see you can see two individuals uh, who are stomping over it. There is what appears to be a dead or at least not well off body that is laying across it as well. All right, dead and poor are not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Probably better to be cautious about this. I'm going to continue under the stairs, having noted everything okay. I've seen from the open hatch. Okay, uh, that is uh, 25 feet, and you go up the stairs. Mm -hmm. All right, you find yourself in the open room of the high quarters where uh, the captain and some of his closest confidants uh, sleep. There is an entryway in the north of this room, sort of just behind where you came out. And uh, yeah, you can hear pounding there as well. Somebody is pounding at the door, not a scant five feet from you. Okay. And much like in the other places, uh, these these people up, re up here, there's a woman in armor immediately in front of you. And she is already, she's already uh, pulling on her armor and uh, 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 drawing her sword. And what has her name? This is Kimbley. Huh? Kimbley. Kimbley, okay. Kimbley, yeah. I, I whispered to Kimbley, I was like, what have you heard? Uh, sounds like we've been boarded. <laughs> I, I... Just as well, I couldn't sleep too well. She just I kind of know. like, there's a little bit of like a light in her eyes as she contemplates the kill. Well, be ready. <laughs> I always am, dear. Is there anyone else awake? Um, yeah, you can you can definitely hear uh, movement from down in uh, Biggins' quarters. It sounds like he's loading his flintlock. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Um, can't really do anything for an action right now. I know he's bursted in, so... Me... You've got, me... I think... Yeah, yeah. You've, you've used all of the movement you can unless you commit to a dash action. You can sacrifice your action to move even further. You are pretty close to the door. Yeah, there's there's no reason to dash. I'd basically just be dashing out into the open. And yeah, I, I can't. There, there's nothing I can really do in terms of like casting a spell uh, that won't, I guess, affect people in the room. I suppose that's so. I will prepare a spell or prepare a spell for somebody bursts through the door. I'll start with a fireball just to send a message. Excellent. So, so the first person, poor bastard that comes through that door, whether it be man, woman, or child, hmm. I'm lighting them on fire. Nice. <laughs> okay, that is, uh, sounds like it's it for Zaliri. Okay. Banging continues in the north, but nothing seems to come of it. Somebody is trying to lever the door open, and they are not doing a very good job. Love that for us. However, in the south, ah. da -da, da -da. the door bursts open. The, the uh, locks, the many locks that Captain Forspoken has had affixed to that door burst through and a rather unseemly looking man wearing shining armor. You guys would actually instantly recognize this armor. This is a pirate hunter for the government of the Untamed Wilds. Terrible. And there are more behind him. He steps into the room wielding a scimitar. Ooh, I love oh, a scimitar. Okay. And I believe your held action, uh, Sean, will go off. All right. So you can take your firebolt. Uh, he's within five feet of you, though. So I believe that means you take it at disadvantage because it's a ranged attack. Gotcha. Unfortunate. So that's a 10. Does that hit? A 10 does not hit, I'm afraid. But not by much. Like, you hit the armor and some of it sort of, like, peels and... And, and, and curls away, you realize it's actually fairly cheap armor that is made to look ornamental. Mm -hmm. Better gone with the thunder. Well, you never do know. Uh, you hear him shout hoarsely behind him as he starts patting out uh, the fire that has lit on his, his pauldron. Oh, they've got a caster in here! But enough about spinning wheel. Damn it, not again! <laughs> and he is going to swing his scimitar at you for a 21 to hit. I mean, yeah, I hit. 
Ah, for only three points of slashing damage. He's also simultaneously trying to put the fire on his pauldron out. But it, but it was enough to, like, like cut my shoulder and some of my hair, and Zaliri gets pissed. Not the hair. Do you know how long it takes to grow this? Uh, from outside, uh, one attack is going to come at Kimberly, and another attack is going to come at Biggins, who has just stepped into the line of fire here with his flintlock out, his flintlock mm. pistol. At Kimberly, it's a dirty 20 to hit. Filthy, dirty little 20. For eight points of damage. I bet if we work really hard, we can both die in the prologue. That'd be really funny. For an 18, Biggins gets hit. Ooh. For nine points of damage. All right, that one actually strikes pretty close to his neck, and he starts, he claps a hand to his neck and shakily aims with his flintlock pistol. Okay, but that's it for those guys. One more individual steps into view. Uh, the man has a wrap around his head, and he has less ostentatious, but more sort of practical-looking armor. Mm. He sights Biggins through the door. He is going to make an attack. He whips a dagger through. Biggins sees it at the last second and manages to dip out of the way. It flies past him and sticks in the wall in the very back. Free dagger later. Yeah. This is just the general crew people's turns. Am stands up and goes to one side of the door. Thrug stands up and goes to the other side of the door. Skip climbs up the wall with his sticky little hands. And is Wolfie here? Yeah. Yes, that was great timing. Yeah, <laughs> sticky hands. Uh, but apart from that, the ones in the fore cabin don't do anything. Can you do me a favor, Wolfie? And roll initiative, because we started in initiative, like jerks. But the good Absolutely. news is, you're probably just asleep like everybody else. Good. Yep. A15. A15. Okay, so we'll hit you, we'll hit you on the, on the go around, because we're a little, we're just past 15 at this point, but. Biggins, already with his flintlock out, uh, shoots the one in the doorway mm. for a single point of damage. He scrapes across the man's balding hair in a single little red hair falls down to the ground. He's so angry. That was my last hair! Uh, Kimbley Bull rushes him. I believe I got a 22 and then a 1. Or 23 for 5 points of damage this time. So he, she, she, dr she drives her blade through the guy's shoulder. And that is it for that turn. A pale elven man steps oh. into view and says, Where is the caster? I just pulled that out of nowhere, and I love it, and I'm going to do it forever now. Uh, the man in the door, bleeding from met from multiple wounds, points over at Zaliri. That's a natural 20 to hit Zaliri. Oh, I guess if you try really hard, you could die in the prologue. Oh, no. What is it? Four million damage. Ha! <laughs> Never mind. High hits, low damage. You take three points of fire damage uh, as flames leap from this guy's hands. Okay. Zaliri's like um, cutting into her, her robes. Top of the turn order with Esgal, uh, you just heard somebody hit the door and go like, ow, fuck, when they <laughs> didn't get through. Ham yeah. and Thrug have taken up positions at either side of the door. Oh, so I got guys planking the door, really. Um, God, there's so much. There's so much I could do. Um, what is in? Are you going like strict rules on things like... Uh, what is in a burglar's pack? Like, is that listed somewhere, or is it just assumed um, that we have something? Yeah, there, there should be a, a list for things that are in a burglar's kit, but, you know, I, like, I'm also open to, like, things that you would probably have, even if you haven't, like, looked it up and entered it in, like, Roll20 or, or wherever you're at. 5E, e, burglar's kit. Everything's online. Burglar's cap. A uh, bag of a thousand ball bearings. Uh, a backpack, yeah. 10 feet of string, a bell, five candles, a crowbar, a hammer, 10 python, um, a hooded lantern, two flasks of oil, five days rations, a tinderbox, a water skin, and 50 feet of hempen rope. Uh, how big is the gap underneath the door? What are you thinking? I think it would be very funny to pour a thousand ball bearings underneath the door and trip up whoever is trying to open it. This is not a well-made and held-together frigate. It is possible that there could be room for that. Do me a favor, roll me a straight d20. Uh, call okay. highs or lows. I will call high. Wait one second. No. Unfortunately, no. You, your, your, your keen 
roguely eye can tell that uh, you just make a mess <laughs> inside okay. where you don't want it to be. Although it could still be helpful because then when they try to come in. But yeah. Is the door open inward or outward? Uh, this door opens. Or... This door opens inward. You know that just on the other side, there's a short flight of stairs down to the deck. Okay. Uh, then what I will do in mm, no, we live here. I'm not gonna light anything on fire. Um, <laughs> you're also uh several days out from port right now, so yeah. Yeah. It's silly. No land in sight. Doesn't make sense to just open the door for them, but otherwise I don't have any action. Well, you could um. Like like Sean did in the last one, um, hold an action. Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll just hold an action to attack if the door gets opened and someone pokes their stupid head in. Makes sense. Like, All right, anything? Stuff. So that's that's an action right there. Anything else? No movement. Is, You're still I mean, hidden. Looking around the room, yeah. Is there a better place to hide with better cover, or where I could get a better drop on somebody than right behind the mast? I mean, that entirely normal? depends on how you want to attack this situation. The ceiling is not very high; it's about it's about ten feet high. So, um, there's there's a limited amount you could do, like up. Yeah. There is a little alcove over here. Uh, it's an unused bed. Uh, I was thinking of maybe, yeah, ducking in there to use the corner to my advantage and have a clean shot of sure. the door. Uh, then in addition to being hidden, you can also get a, a certain amount of, um, you'll probably get partial cover, uh, which is plus two to your AC. All right, but I'm still anyone attacking holding, you from the door. holding action for the bow and arrow, and that's what we will. Yeah, okay. Excellent. All right. Zaliri, this dude is in front of you. He's just tried to take a chop at you, and there's clearly another mage out there allied with these pirate hunters. Okay. I'm debating whether I should do a dangerous move, because I'm not sure if it's going to affect Kimbley. I have Thunder Wave, which it affects everybody in a 15-foot cube originating from where I am, so it looks like it'll catch at least two, maybe three people. Um, and uh, everybody, like, and it'll push everybody 10 feet away from me. It doesn't say anything about allies. Uh, it would it would also uh, do damage and hit your ally. Uh, it, it would affect an ally the same way. It makes no distinction. Okay. Familiar with that spell. <laughs> Kimberly is just crazy enough to like that. You know this from having worked on this ship for a while. <laughs> she will not hold it against you. I, I turn to Kimberly and I simply just wave, <laughs> and she not she, like, she hey, understands. You, she gives you like a thumbs up. All right, I will do. I'm just gonna do a level one because I don't want to hurt her. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and Kimberly. Apologies, my crew, for the disturbance I am about to make. <laughs> that's a 10. That's a failure. It's a 6. That's a failure. It's a 19. That is a save. 5 is a failure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a 14. Does a 14 save? That is a save. And that is a 4. Kimberly takes full. 10 damage. So everybody who made the save gets half that. And, and they get pushed 15 feet away. No, no, 10 feet away. Okay. Boom. Okay. So this guy actually goes flying into the corner over here and cracks his head against it and dies. First blood uh, belongs to uh, Zaleri. Well, it's not my fault that the guy didn't know how to open a fucking door. Zaleri just <laughs> puffs up her sleeves across the ship. Asgol is like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Everybody else you can see uh, was, was pushed tumbling end over end uh, by your issue. Uh, the, the captain man with the strap across his forehead and the practical armor weathered it. He just kind of, like, ground his feet into the top of the hatchway. Mm -hmm. And uh, he clearly took some damage. Like, his nose is bleeding a little bit, but he looks up at you with fiery eyes. Uh, anything else? Well, I do have a move. Uh... You do. And you're now a squishy spellcaster uh, who is next to a doorway to the outside. Yeah, so... I'm gonna be a little ballsy. I'm just gonna step in front of the door, open door, and just like stare down the dude. Very nice. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, I like that. Some applause. <laughs> Make some heavy eye contact. And uh that's it for you? Yeah, that is it. I'm... Okay. Mothman, the bells, the warning bells did not wake you up. The cannon fire from the other ship did not wake you up. This sonorous crack did wake you up where on a pirate ship would mothman be sleeping uh he's a rather large individual so pretty much anywhere that would house him uh mothman would probably be somewhere in like a ball like kind of just cradling himself so pretty much he would wherever 
there would be an open spot he would sleep. So okay, little open spot, All right, big enough for his mess. Yeah. Immediately behind Kimberly, there is a room. It is the meeting room, where the captain, Captain Forspoken, who also sl who sleeps in the next room, uh, speaks with his his lead officer. So you sleep on the board table because none of the beds are big enough. You are just yeah. behind where this cracking sound has come from. All right, so you wake up. No. <clears throat> You see Kimberly uh, go go tumbling backwards and smack against the doorway and sort of like land in a daze. You drunk? Yeah. No, <laughs> that smell. Wait a minute. <laughs> he just, just kind of like steps over them. Uh-huh. You see uh, Zeliri, uh, an, uh, an elven caster that you know, uh, standing defiantly in framed in the doorway and beyond it there's a stranger wearing strange armor and blood and dead bodies on the on the uh deck of the ship why didn't anyone wake me i just did <laughs> well good morning good evening <laughs> uh so what's their deal <sighs> pirate hunters biggins behind you the orc is bleeding and is trying frantically to reload his flintlock Oh, y'all are fight. Okay. All right, hold on. Mm. Mm. Okay. Try to beat the piss out of him. Zalari points at the dead guys like, we have one down, more will follow. Well, I I guess that's fine. Really? Uh, well, don't follow them, though. <laughs> and he, I'd say Mothman's like still just kind of like waking up and not, is, is trying to just exist in the moment they are not a morning person <laughs> whatsoever they have no idea what's going on and to be honest they don't really think this is reality at the moment so they're just like oh, whatever. <laughs> are their dreams normally like this uh they are a heavy sleeper so probably they, <laughs> uh, uh, they dream the, the of impression i'm getting is that they are heavy everywhere yes they are a heavy sleeper and just heavy walking <laughs> okay so are you <laughs> are you comfortable with leaving it at that or do you have a weapon on you? Uh, I I mean, I would assume he would sleep with his mace. There you go, mace. Perfect. Yep. Mace and shield. Excellent. Which? The shield is the pillow. Yeah, he props it up with the mace. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so probably seeing what's going on, well, I'm going to first, I'm going to go ahead and cast, you know, cast Cure Wounds on the person behind me. Because if they're bleeding, I don't want them to die. Excellent. So, okay. I'll do that at a second level. So, Biggins is very grateful. Uh, cure wounds. That is uh, 13 HP back. Wow. Okay. No, he's back up to full. Like, he wipes the blood from his neck, and there's, like, a little bit of a scar uh, that's still there. It glows brightly, and then it fades into the, the, the flesh of his neck, and he coughs, and he's just like, Ugh. Ugh. We gotta get him out there. We gotta rout him before they get to the captain. All right. And uh, am I able to move after doing that? Uh, you have used, I was counting, about 20 feet of movement. Yeah, you're right. Yep, I'm good. Okay. All right. So you'll just sort of like stand as a little bit of a bulwark between uh, them and the others. Uh, anything else for Mothman? Nope. That was the only bonus action he could do, so he's fine. Okay. All right. You hear groaning and grumbling and the creaking of planks as those that Zeliri has had knocked to their butts uh, slowly get up to their feet. One of them actually uh, was not actually uh, knocked over and runs directly in, slashing at Zeliri with a wild look in his eyes. That is a five to hit. The trajectory of his uh, scimitar hits the laser-focused death glare between you and this captain man, and is immediately deflected away. Oh. <laughs> this one right here is going to step to the mast and is going to try and take a pot shot at Zaleri as well. Oh my god. That's a 12 to hit. Does a 12 hit? If it matches my armor class, does that count? Is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. It meets your armor. Meets, meets it, beats it. Okay, yeah. So that's it. We need to get you some armor. Just a little something. Light yeah. Armor. yeah. Yeah, I need maybe some... maybe maybe consider throwing mage armor on that list. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That plus, I think it's a plus four, plus five. I forget. 
exactly. Should I left it down to For nine points of damage. Oof. Yeah, they, they, they seem to roll the green when they hit you. Zaliri's taking quite a beating, but he is staying tough. Holding fast. She's a brave sort, this Zaliri. We're learning a lot, I think. Uh, up in the northern part, another attack. This time, one of the other ruffians kind of comes up the stairs and uh, gives the other guy a little massage. It was like, come on. Uh, come on, c come on, Grapely, you can do this. I know you can. I've seen you crack open beer cans. Well, I've seen guy, supporting guy. <laughs> Henchman, supporting him. I can crack open okay. a gold one, too. <laughs> so with the advantage of the of the assist action that happened just there, uh, a 19, and he Grapely throws his shoulder into the door, and he finally manages to knock off the locks that were holding the door in place. The door goes to pieces, and... Uh, Eskal's held action held goes action off. Triggers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just, uh... Hit. Alright. Fuck. We got an 11. Ah, jeez. Uh, it, the arrow... Alright, it, it whizzes right past and takes a few hairs off of the beard. The scimitar, uh, wielding, uh, goons, uh, prepare to filter into the room, but not before Ham and Thrug take their own actions. That's a 17. Why? Dude, these are for you guys to fight, not the NPCs. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Just let it happen. Ham does a one to the guy standing in the doorway, and Thrug deals 16 points of damage. Um, wow, job, okay, Thrug. there is a sort of geyser of blood that rains down around this captain as as Grapely um, goes oh, flying God. down the stairs and rolls off to the side. He is dead. <laughs> oh, damn, Thrug. It's the last back okay. he's ever. Yeah, heard. I mean, at least he died like slightly less bound up in the in the solar plexus or what? Not the solar plexus, in the delts, bound up in yeah. the delts. Trapezius. Maybe. Okay, the captain here turns around at this, he sees that his goons are doing well down here, but one of them just got exploded over there, so he is going to dash and starts dueling with Ham and Thrug simultaneously. He has a dagger in one hand and a rapier in the other. Oop. One attack at Ham, 23 to hit. Two attacks at Ham, eight. And one attack at Thrug for a 21 to hit. Seven points at Thrug, uh, no, not Thrug, at Ham, who is oh. the pale guy. All right, it is the turns of the general's townsfolks. All right, Biggins kind of gives up on his flintlock, dashes past Kimbley and Mothman, and is going to try and push this guy out of the doorway. Uh, that guy manages to hold firm, so these two begin grappling in the middle of all of this. Kimbley is dazed on the floor. It's Ham and Thrug's turn again, because they that, that previously was their held action. All right, so... Ham misses. Thrug manages to hit with the bedside table that he is holding in one single hand, dealing 10 points of damage and nearly knocking the man back down the stairs. Oh, that's it for them. Uh, all right, with the door open, I'm going to go ahead and let everybody in on what's uh, what the deal is out here. Oh, it's been sorry. happening. All right, you got a few dead bodies, some that you recognize, some that you don't. The caster who was knocked over last turn gets to his feet. He is going to sort of mark out Zaliri in his sights. For an eight to hit, he opens his palm and he seems to have like a ball bearing or something in his hand. He blows upon it and it rushes past the ear of his companion framed in the doorway, rushes at Zeliri and misses and takes a chunk out of the wall above Kimberly's head. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. It is Esgal's turn. Oh, I love that guy. Love that guy. What's the deal for swapping weapons? And my my plan is to just drop the bow, pull my sword, and go stab somebody. Dropping the bow is a freebie, and uh -huh. drawing the drawing one is an interaction, uh, which you get one free. Oh, so free what a action, value. and I guess you would call it a swift action. Oh, in, in like Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, then yeah, so we got a rapier, and there's a guy at the door, but it doesn't look like I can actually get at him, because there are people in the way. I think I'm just gonna knock another arrow and call that a day. I have this as, as uh, I can gain advantage on 
and attack as a bonus action when you are motionless? Does that just mean not walking, or does that mean I need to, like, actively stay still? I would say, basically, uh, you sacrifice your move action in order to give yourself advantage. Okay, and any time that's that how, I have That's how I would interpret that. Attack. If you have advantage, you have sneak attack always, but you would have sneak attack against this guy anyway because you have uh, allies within five feet of him. Make that advantage go. Well, we'll see. Ah, there we go. 22, 22 to hit. 22 will done it, yeah. So with sneak attack, that is 4d6. Yeah, 16 damage. 16. All right. He did yeah. not. He clearly was primarily concerned with the massive orc in front of him. And also mm -hmm. the, like, scrappy little guy. He did not even notice you until just now. Well, that's good. I don't even know you noticed me so much as the arrow. But it's nice to be thought about. That's pleasant. Okay. Anything else for Asgall? Um, That's really my whole turn, I think, because I sacrificed my move to do the... And you don't have any bonus? Um... God, what even is a bonus? Yeah, it has to call it out specifically, call itself out as a bonus action for it to count. I could dash, disengage, or hide. But if I hide where I am, he still knows I'm there? Or how does that... Uh, he, he does, but that means he does not have sight on you, and he will have to make a skill check in order to figure out exactly where you are. I think he could probably well, fire into that area, mm -hmm. but, but he would do so at disadvantage like he would if you were invisible. All right, we'll hide then. As a bonus action. Yeah, can't hurt. Can't hurt. And that's it for me. Okay. It is Zaliri's turn. What's the status of the guy in front of me? Like, how bad is he? Compared to the other ones that you can see, actually, mm -hmm. basically all the other ones you can see are dead, um, he's, he's, he's not quite bloody. Okay. Well, he's in my way. Noticed that, did you? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I can do is I'm going to thunderclap him, uh, make a... Uh, con saving throw. There it is. It's a 16. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, with really no damage. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, cantrip. That's a cantrip. Yeah. 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 Okay. They tend to be save or suck. Yeah. Well, shit. Right. Uh, can't really do anything else. And that <laughs> my only bonus action is uh, convert sorcery points, which I don't know what that means. So you can do that to do things like recover. Uh, spell slots that you've spent, or there should be a, a list of things about sorcery points that you can spend on. Um, it oh, it okay, kind of yeah. grows. It grows as a sorcerer levels what you can do and how often you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure exactly what you're capable of right now, but it's, that's one of the cool things about about sorcery points. You can also use it to change spells, like to change how spells work. Mm -hmm. um, but that that'll be very specific to your build, so. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll have to do some digging on that, but uh, I guess, yeah, that's it from the current. All righty. Shit. Mothman, help me. Mothman, tired. And I'm just, as he, as Mothman says that, he's going to, like, raise his mace and just swing down onto this guy, uh, right, like, right in the doorway. Excellent. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, 14. 14 hits. Oh, yay. Doing uh, four damage. Bludgeoning. Four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. You knock him a little bit silly, and he sits there and he holds his head for a second, but he blinks his eyes, and he is back to good. But you can tell that you've heard him. Almost on death's door here. Anything else? Oh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and do a bonus action. Uh, yeah, we're going to do spiritual weapon. And What does your spiritual weapon look like when it appears? Uh, it looks exactly like the mace that I'm holding, which is just an ordinary mace, and instead of, like, setting it, like, 60 feet in front of me, I'm just gonna hold my hand up, summon the mace, and then, like, a fly swatter, essentially, try to, like, swat it down towards him, just using my hand. I'm not, like, gonna touch the thing itself, but I'm just trying to hit him with the mace Shaw. once again. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, give me that roll. Uh, that's a dirty 20. That definitely hits. That is 7... What kind of damage is it? That'll One, probably two. be force. I is it think force? it's probably force. Oh, it is force, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, seven force. All right, you you knock this guy upside the head with such strength that his legs leave the ground and he tumbles backwards into the space behind him onto the deck. Opened it. Oh, <laughs> shit, this is real. Okay. Am I able to go up one more step, or would I be in the Absolutely, way? Absolutely, yeah. You'll, you'll be hugging the wall a little bit. And remember, allies can move through your space as long as you let them, so... Oh, yeah. I'm a... You won't be in the way in the way. After you. I can only go five more feet, and I'm not standing in the middle of it. All right. 
uh, you hear some scattered yelling from outside. Two more goons land from the port side of the ship. Jesus. And they sort of like, they're not superheroes. They can't do a superhero landing. They kind of fall down to one knee. One of them you can actually see let go of a rope that then swings back out of sight. They appear to have swung onto the ship. <clears throat> These ones, that's all they can do. This one right here is going to step onto his fallen brethren and is going to lash around the corner at Mothman. And you have a plus two to your AC because you have partial cover from the doorway. And it doesn't oh, matter because that's a natural one. So you go like, you like step to the side, you'd be like, hey, after you. And then suddenly there's just like a clink <laughs> as this guy's scimitar like just hits bounces the off frame it. of the door. Yeah, just bounces off. Uh, this guy up mm. here is going to lash out at Ham, the only one he can reach. Ham also has partial cover. Doesn't matter, that's a nine. And we move on to the captain's turn. What All right, the captain there? is going to make two attacks at Thrug and one attack at Ham. He's he's lightning quick with this. Uh, damn it, none of the attacks at Thrug make it through. Uh, the attack at Ham does. He deals five points of damage. Man. Ham takes it in the stomach and he is looking a little queasy. The captain is going to duck away and do a little backflip down the stairs. He has disengaged as a bonus action. <laughs> he begins shouting instructions uh, to unseen folks just outside of your guys' field of vision on the port side of the ship. What, is he like saying it in common or? Yes, he is saying it in common. Um, he's, he's, but it, it's, it's, it's a little bit cryptic what he's saying. He's like, no, 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 don't take it right there. Get, bring it down, bring it down. You know, things like that. Things that okay. you lack context for, you know? Yeah. But he's shouting at someone. It is the random NPCs' turns. Thrug is immediately going to be off through the doorway. He makes an attack. At this pirate hunter down here for 22 to hit seven points of damage that's actually the first damage this guy has taken so his next his his head sort of like cracks to the side and he stumbles but he kind of pulls himself back together and ham is going to step here and do much the same 21 to hit for three points of damage the gentleman is on death's door he shakes it off only to get a a, a stab in the um in the in the shoulder Okay. The mage turns around to where Thrug has just emerged and is clearly momentarily intimidated. He does the ball bearing trick again. He blows on it in his hand and it cracks off at Thrug. 13 hits. 24 definitely hits. So the ball bearing goes through Thrug and into Ham. Oh no. Oh. Actually, it continues on past Ham and creates a little... Uh, blood pock crater in in the wood where Esgal is immediately hiding behind. Gee, they killed Thrug? Well, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Thrug takes eight points of damage. Ham takes ten. Oh. And Ham goes down. <laughs> it goes right through his chest. Poor oh, Ham. No. Thrug yeah. notices. And he goes, hey! Um, but it is Esgal's turn. You have just seen Ham. You've just seen Ham. You've just seen Ham bleeding. He's bleeding his life's blood out onto the ground. The blood of his heart. Can I see where that attack came from? Um, yeah. Yeah, you actually can. Uh, if you peek around. I'm peeking around. I'm peeking. 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh-oh. No point in trying to be stealthy at that point, I don't think. Seems it. If I was in this square here, it's just the mage that I would be adjacent to, correct? Correct. So, yeah, uh, however, gonna, I, you would I move through the space of the captain, which means you would get an attack of opportunity. Take it. Okay. It ain't about that. Okay. Attack of opportunity from the captain. He whips out 18. Does it hit? It exactly hits. Exactly hits. Okay. Or maybe I'm wrong. It actually might more than hit, but it does hit regardless. Uh, for five points of slashing damage. Sorry, You're I have so a six swift that he. Ah, yeah. You're so swift moving past him that he almost does not catch you. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so I'm going to stab this guy, the mage. Um, okay. And I get sneak attack because he's the only creature, or he was. Yeah, he's the only creature adjacent to... Uh, is that just because I have sneak That is a thing for 
buccaneers or swashbucklers rather neat okay so that 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 encourages uh one-on-one -on -one combat that makes sense yes from a from a from but a it game doesn't design. correct me <clears throat> when i have advantage i have sneak attack just because i have sneak attack does not grant me advantage correct correct and there's nothing for coming out of a dash to give any kind of a bonus? Or that's uh, not you for possible. you. There are some okay. abilities in the game that allow that, but it's that's I don't believe that that is an ability that you have. just want to make sure that I have all my math figured out. Sorry. Yep. It's fine. Yeah, it is. And creatures I attack can't make attacks of opportunity against me that turn, just so you're aware. Good to know. All right. So Wait, I, think, did I don't you... think I have... Hold, hold on a sec. I didn't attack the other guy. Also, I critted. You did attack. Okay, all right. Yeah, you all critted. Right, do, you only right. on a, do you only crit on a 20 in this? Uh, it depends. There are, again, some builds that uh, allow you to crit. Actually, you might want to double check uh, Swashbuckler. Yeah, because I think it that's doesn't... 19 from what I remember. Yeah. I could be wrong. Just a second. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, too. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, no. So I don't have anything that changes that, so apparently it's just on a 20 in this game? Just on a 20 for you at okay. this time. No worries. Um, I still get my sneak attack damage, so I get a, a D8 and three D6. Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> Man, typing is hard. 21 damage to the mage. 21 damage to the mage. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um. Okay. Did you not hear? Yeah. Okay. How do you want? How do you want that to happen? Because you've just murdered him. <laughs> I would like to stab him through his dumb, stupid throat. All right. It's like. It's for ham. Yeah. He starts encanting things under his breath, but it's it's too late. And the uh, magic dies in his throat, along with the rest of him. I'll give his him a hearty kick to the chest to ensure that he falls over in the most gory way possible. Yep. That's very like, swashbuckler want, right there. Get off my blood sword. on his friend. Yeah, exactly. You get it. <laughs> yeah. God, okay, I hope we have anything. a clearer gun for it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't have anything to hide behind from where I'm at. I imagine. You do not. You're kind of out in the open, and everybody's looking at you now. And actually, That's yeah, right. from where you're at, you can see that off the port bow, there is a much larger ship within 20 oh. feet of the side of your ship. Hey, interesting. Uh, the uh, sort of, like, filigreed uh, uh, writing along the side uh, declares it to be the... Hold on. The UW Imperius. The... U W Curious. You know that that is a call sign of ships of the Untamed Wilds. Okay, which we already knew because they're Untamed Wilds pirate hunters. But yes, you think that but... they spend more time taming their wilds and less time bothering independent contractors on boats. Every single Untamed Wilder in the world has heard that joke. I was being completely serious. <laughs> the Untamed Wilds used to be Untamed and Wild. It is no longer, but the name stuck. Sometimes it's too good to change. Sometimes it's too good to change. That's a, that's a good... That's got fantasy street cred of the untamed wild. It's, it's, it's branding. It's like changing a popular bird icon to an X. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there, but it still got me. <laughs> I decided that Edgar will only ever refer to the untamed wilds as the tamed wilds and will not accept corrections. If Mama that. named it untamed wilds, I'm calling it untamed wilds. <laughs> um... Anything else for Esgal? I think I have exhausted all of my opportunity. You did what you yeah. came here to do. I absolutely yeah. did. Don't don't kill somebody who I got very attached to in the three seconds that I knew. How do you? <laughs> I liked that weird right. <laughs> Zaliri. Yeah. Uh, you've just seen the sea elf Esgal come bursting out of the 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 front. You see, you saw him come bursting out of the door, past Thrug, and. Uh, absolutely obliterate the mage who has been hassling you this whole time. Mm, all right. I can't slip past this guy, right? He's like basically still blocking the door. Um, I think arguably you could. You'd take an attack of opportunity because you can move diagonally. Uh, Esgal, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Okay. Are you asking about my HP or are you just asking yeah. like generally? Just yeah, no, 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 that's your HP. I've only taken five damage, so I'm I'm in good shape. All right. He doesn't appear nearly as ragged as some of the others around here. I have the idea that you're shouting this over your shoulder at her. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Complete Come with on. the question clarifying. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I'm going to uh, do an area of a, an a AOE. Um, AOE. You're going to be caught in the middle of it. It's like you could oh. plan that in a way that that didn't happen, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if, I, uh, 
if I can do this, I'm getting everybody. <laughs> she, she's a very collateral damage kind of caster, I think we are learning. I'm down with it. <laughs> They're after yep, my absolutely. secrets. I will not let them. And I have taken too much damage. All she right, was so. teaching Ham how to read. I'm coming up next to you. Okay, you will take an attack of opportunity. Wait, what can I do with an attack of opportunity? You're getting, you're, you are um, receiving That means one. that you're going to take an attack as you pass it. Uh, you take six points of slashing damage. All right. I am bleeding out here, but the hell with it. I'm going to do uh, a, uh, an under, another Thunder Wave, level one, because if I do level two, I might accidentally kill my own people. True. All right. Uh, so everybody do a con save, con, th uh, con save throw. Con saving throw. Everybody within 15 feet of you, yes? Yeah, so I... Uh, All right, so that's Asgall, uh, not not the least. Right. So this guy and... Uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like Thrug and that guy are safe. Yeah, but everybody else, all the other baddies that you can see, aside from the ones, yeah, you can also see the ship uh, pulled up next to you. And there's actually people standing on the gunwale of that ship waiting to swing over. It looks like they're trying to get like a boarding ramp on there mm -hmm. too. Okay, twelve, fourteen, nineteen, and eighteen. What the hell? What was the DC? Is the thirteen. Thirteen. So the oh, twelve I, fails. As did I. Okay. So how much? How much uh, damage are we looking at? That's all eleven damage. Eleven damage on a failure. All right. Mm. Well, this guy thrown backwards into the wall. He's fine, but then he lands on this corpse right here. This corpse had a scimitar facing out, but he just <laughs> <laughs> he dead. We love this. All right. Him. So five points on a failure. Yeah. Or on a on a on a save rather. No, um, on a save. Yeah. This one also dies. And this one also dies because they were both at death's door. And uh, any loose like stuff that's on the on the deck will get like thrown about. So if a few any... loose oh. things like the there this one of them clearly was fighting with a dagger, and uh, the dagger goes <laughs> into the water on the other side. Uh, the captain made it with the skill of somebody of sound mind and body, which these guys were not. All right. Anything else for? Zaliri. I fail, so I need to be blown minute. back 10 feet. I imagine that's on you, which 10 feet that is. Um, uh, well, it'll be directly outward from her, so it'll be, like, you'll basically go tumbling towards the gunnel. Okay. On the, uh, I just didn't want to do the move myself. On the starboard side of the ship. Yep, that's right, right, starboard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, anything else for Zaliri? Nope, that is it. Okay. <laughs> I am, I am, I'm, in... I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, Quick question with the uh, with the spiritual weapon. Yes. So it says that it has a 60-foot range. Um, Correct. But as I'm looking at the spell, it also says I can use a bonus action to make it travel up Okay, uh, up so the range feet. is just for the act of casting it. You can ignore mm -hmm. that from here on out. Yeah, so bonus action would be the... Now I'm able to move it, essentially. Yes, to move it move would it be and the... make an attack. Okay. Yeah, we'll move it 20 feet, 15. So I put them right there the mace right. okay and then for me now does that count as casting a spell uh no that is just a bonus action uh the spell is already cast and is currently in in operation so no. okay okay because the thing is it so spiritual weapon doesn't say whether it's concentration or not so i wasn't sure if i'm able to cast a spell with yeah, it out absolutely. um if it doesn't say concentration on the duration yeah it just says one minute then it is not concentration. Okay, sweet. Then uh, coming out, 5, 10, 15. I like to move with the mace. I'll cast Guiding Bolt at a third level onto that dude. The pirate hunter captain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 25. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you hit. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mothman's got it. And what's it? Do? Oh, damn. Ah, uh, that is 21 radiant. Damn. Is that radiant? 21 radiant? Yeah. Hot damn. Okay, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Guiding Bolt also uh, causes an effect wherein future attacks gain advantage, yes? Uh, and the next attack roll made against this target before the end of your next turn has advantage. So yes. Sick. So basically, advantage until the end of my next turn. We're going to work very well together, synergistic. I'll give it time. <laughs> you guys didn't really coordinate, but you still came out with an incredibly well-rounded party for, for three people. Sick. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of funny to have, like, a Goliath cleric 
Like, that's I'm going to swing stuff and help. But yeah, that's right. the end of my turn now, because I have nothing else I can do. You didn't, uh, did you make an attack with your spiritual weapon? Uh, no, it does not reach, because it only moves up to 20 feet. Oh, up to 20? I thought it was up to 30. Okay. Nope. nope, mine only moves up to 20. All right, well, that's some, that's some old bullshit, as they say. Yep. This pirate hunter is going to cut and run. It's going to run away from Frug. He's going to hop down off of the uh, the thing. He's going to take an attack of, attack of opportunity from Thrug. That's a nine. That's a miss. He's going to launch himself into the drink. Wow. You never see that, indeed. I, I frequently have them do. Like, I, I'm not going to fight to the death. If I, if I, like, he, he's seen everybody, like, there's more guys coming, but as of right now, apart from the captain, he's the only one, it seems, on this ship, from his ship. Makes it Wouldn't make more sense. Realistic, honestly. Plus, he just saw, like, half of these guys fucking explode uh, <laughs> when, when an elven caster just casually walked into the middle of them and went, Poof! No, you fussro didn't. Um, that was terrible. It happens. The pirate hunter captain, the uh, the untamed wilder captain, is going to casually stride over. He is going to shoot an attack at Zaliri. Twenty-one to hit. Ah. Uh, for eight points of damage. Ah. Uh, How you looking? I am. I am on a knee. I am coughing up blood. Okay. Good time to heal. <laughs> well, he's going to turn around. He's going to send an attack at Mothman. Twenty-three to hit. 23 hits. Now, am I able... Now, before you say anything, for reactions, do I have to say I want to use my reaction before you say a number, or am I able to use my reaction after you say that it? Depends on the, that depends on the reaction. Uh, it says you can focus on yourself to occasionally shrug off an injury. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d12. Uh, add your constitution oh, modifier. Oh, yeah, the, 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 you, don't, you don't have to... Uh, if it doesn't say... It, if it doesn't specify when you're supposed to do it in relation to the roll, I don't think it matters. You can wait until I give you the, the damage number, or you can do it preemptively. I'll wait. Okay. That is five points of slashing damage. I'll take it. Okay. And he is going to take a step away. Is Zaliri wielding a melee weapon at this time? Uh, yes, she does have a mace of her own. No kidding. All right, you are free to, uh, if you are still conscious... I am conscious. You are free to make an attack of opportunity at the captain as he steps away from you. Doesn't that get advantage because of Mothman's spell from earlier? Uh, yeah. No, actually, yeah. You would take advantage um, because he is actually glowing with, like, this sort of holy energy that draws your eyes and your weapons directly towards him. <laughs> no. All right, that's an 18. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your damage. Got a five. Yep, okay, so you, you, you crack into his calf. As he, because you're down on one knee, so you just kind of yeah. lash out. Shatter the Achilles tendon. I wouldn't say shatter. Well, you lightly inconvenience. Oh no, someone lightly inconvenienced my tendons. Hey, if he ever goes for a run, that small inconvenience can turn it air. It's the long game. <laughs> uh, and he steps towards uh, our man Esgal. Well, why is he doing that? As well. What the That's fuck? 14. Why does I have three attacks? 14 misses. What do you mean, why does he have three attacks? He's the fucking mainstay. You actually, uh, you would recognize his fighting style as being uh, an extremely uh, educated, high-class, very disciplined sort of order of of, uh, gotcha. of direct melee combat. Okay. But that's it for him. Actually, no, that isn't that isn't it for him. He's going to take his bonus action, and he is going to disengage. He does, uh, he does as, you, as you guys try to defend yourselves, he does a little backflip, a little pirouette out of the way. That's fine. Hey, get back here. Hey. No. It's talking to you. No. You're just going to hit me. Maybe. Uh, it is the NPC's turns. Uh, Biggins, having spent his last turn reloading his flintlock, steps out onto the deck, much more healed now than he was previously. Welcome back. Oy. And he points and he shoots. You know what? He doesn't even shoot at the uh, at the captain. He shoots at one of the uh, pirate hunters up on the deck of the next ship. That is getting ready. Wise. Huh? Wise. I like it. Wise. I think he said why. And I'm like, fucking don't question me. Uh, no. <laughs> why? Because I'm trying to remind you that there's a looming threat right over there. That's why. <laughs> Two points. Wings him. Wings him just he, barely. Bet they'll think twice about standing up. Thrug is going to throw his bedside table at the captain. Uh, he nimbly steps out of the way and it goes crashing into the gunnel and he and then Thrug goes like, oh no, my wallet was in there. 
Your friend is dead. Priority. Wallet. I never liked him. Not the dead one. <laughs> this one. Kimberly is still dazed. Uh, the other ones aren't really doing much. Ivan is taking his sweet fucking time. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for the NPCs. All right. Asgall, as you prepare to take your, your move, you suddenly hear uh, a great splash. You can feel the ship knocking around you. As though something what? large has caused a wave or something nearby. Suddenly, all of you hear this horrifying crunching sound. Uh, and, and you look up and you can actually see the UW Imperius move as though it's been hit by something. The rocking has become very intense. It's, it's throwing you guys around on your feet. You hear the crunching of wood and the UW Imperius disappears from sight to the aft side of the ship. Something massive and dark against the nighttime sky, but sort of like pockmarked with little orange jets of fire, moves through the space. The untamed wilder captain looks after his ship, realizes it's gone. He runs to the gunnel, and he stares after it. There is nothing but wood and barrels in the water, and that one pirate hunter who jumped overboard before, barely floating on top of the water, shouting, did you see that? Captain, did you see it? The Imperius is gone. The captain Woo! seems to make a very quick and shrewd calculation, and he throws both his dagger and his rapier to the deck of the ship. We out of combat? If you want to be. Well, I was planning on closing the distance bare minimum. Uh, I don't have any position on this ship, so like it's not my job to negotiate with. I can kick him in the knee. You sure can. Yeah, just to, like, subdue him. That's all. Non-violently, even. I'll grab his sword. Yeah, just, like, kick it away or, or, or pick it up. No, I'll grab it. I'll yep. kick away the dagger. But I yep. like swords. Um, swords are good. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like he was the last combatant. Is our captain saying anything? But your captain is not in ready evidence. Oh, so uh, our captain hasn't been out? Nope. Okay. Um, I would assume that our captain would be in their chambers. I don't have the information that they're not. Yep. So I'd probably start hustling the enemy captain toward where I think our captain is. Uh, that would be in the aft of the ship. Correct. All right. Because I, I don't know what the fuck just happened, so I'm going to deal with the problem that I can deal with, which is the one remaining bad guy. Yep. He looks beat to hell, by the way. You guys straight up did almost kill him. All right, so you're hustling him to the back? Yeah, I, yeah, I feel out of combat. Uh... Yeah, if, if everybody... What do you think? Mm. Mm. Or at least interpersonal combat. Yeah, I, I, I think Mothman is just going to see what happened. Because a, a big boat just exploded, essentially. So, yeah, he's just like, I don't, uh, shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to make of any of this. You hear a so, voice from over the gunnel. Captain, Captain, it's cold down here in the water. Someone throw him along. Ah, thrug. Thank you, Walls Thrug. over. Yeah, I have to get my wallet anyway. <laughs> Do you have any money in it for crying out loud? <laughs> I mean, no, odds are the, the table would be floating. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, you, you see him at work with uh, with uh, some spare rigging that's tied to the side. You know he's going to throw him a rope. Like, I'm only going <laughs> to let you on the ship if you grab that end table. If you grab that end table, oh, you just grab that real quick. Yeah, I'll do anything you ask me to. Just get me up. These two are going to be best friends. Uh, anyway, all right. So just kind of grabbing like a handful of this guy's sort of the underclothing to the armor, uh, mm. sort of like cotton underclothes there. You, you could just kind of drag him through. Uh, Hope, the navigator, not one of the fighting hands. There's really no reason for her to be out on the floor. Starts when you come through the door and then like sort of like breathes a sigh of relief. Kimberly still sort of dazed on the ground. She was at exactly zero hit points. Uh, as a result what? of that. Uh, huh? Really? At zero? Yeah, she was at zero hit points. <laughs> That's why she didn't join for the rest of the fight. Uh, you, you hit her pretty hard with the um, uh, thunder, thunder, thunder clap there. Thunder wave. I know what I'm saying. Hey, she okay? Then... You stunned her. You stunned her. Also, somebody heal me. <laughs> what? Oh. All right. I feel really, uh... Oh, fuck. Are we actually All awake? Right. <laughs> I am. I mean, uh, 
real quick, before I heal you, you are. can you just like slap me real quick so I can know that I'm like here? Go for it. Roll sneak attack. Sneak attack? <laughs> I will lightly smack my fellow crewman. <laughs> I will lightly smack my fellow crewman. Nah, yeah, no, I'm alive. All right. Hmm. I'm All right. alive. And then uh, I'm gonna, you know, just do uh, I'll just do a first level pure wounds on you, which will heal uh, thirteen. There you go. Awesome. Thirteen points. Okay. Esgal, with his handful of this guy's shirt, drags this captain into the captain's quarters. You can actually see Captain Renald Forspoken, a, a, a human man, uh, probably in his late 60s, early 70s, is standing by the back windows of this ship, uh, which are open to the darkness beyond. Mm. You can see the light from the, this back room lit, lit by candles. Some of that light falls down onto the waves, and you can see just like detritus, pieces of wood, pieces of barrels, pieces of old rigging, uh, a severed arm. Some of a sail goes flying by. It's all tattered. Not for nothing, and torn. we should cast out nets and see if we can catch any floating food barrels. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but Captain Forspoken uh, is simply staring out the window with his foot up, sort of on the sill, uh, and a pipe in his mouth as he stares out. Thinking about jumping, Captain? Uh, my first and only love be the waves. Would certainly be befitting to me that. Her cold embrace be the last thing that I feel in this world. But tis not my time yet. What have we here? <clears throat> uh, captain of the pirate hunter ship that just got fucking obliterated. Oh, yeah, I... it just kind of blew up out of nowhere. There were fiery tentacles involved. It was not simply blown up. It was the Tide Maw. I've seen it before. Tide Maw? I have you not heard the legend of the Tide Maw. A ship, the great fiery mouth, consumes other ships. Uh, Adam, I'm gonna ask you, I've been a, my character's been a sailor his whole life. Is this a niche story, or is this something that gets passed around? Uh, you can roll history. I was gonna ask, was it history or religion? Um, this would be history. <laughs> With a six, alright, no, it, it, uh, it does not ring a bell to you. I, I, I rolled history as well, um... And, and I got twenty because to my my character's a scholar, so she's like, I've I've heard of it. All right, like, so you got very very weakly. She even pulls out like a little bloody notebook out of her. <laughs> yep. I've been wanting to see one for a while. Oh, well, you saw one. I I I was busy bleeding. I don't suppose you could want us to find some food and fresh water while you're at it. Uh, I'll tell you what I know, and uh, yeah, uh, Zeliri knows as well. Um, the older captains are the ones who talk about it, and they don't like to talk about it. There's a superstition that speaking of it summons it. Mm. Uh, as far as you know, it's sort of ships go missing sometimes in the darkness. Uh, some consider this thing to be a hoax, this this living ship of darkness, this ship monster. But others others hold it to be true that for some reason, maybe it's some sort of wizard's construct or some sort of experiment, an experimental seaborne weapon of the Mage Wars from a thousand years ago. Oh, Nobody really oh. knows, but many people claim to see it open its wide maw and swallow ships whole. The captain explains this to you as well. They say that some ancient captain had a grudge against the world around him, went down to the Nine Hells, and he was spat back out as the soul of this infernal ship. Mm. I never thought I'd see it again before I die. How'd you see it the first time? Oh, Feels relevant. I was young yet at the time. You're a, you're a human, so this was like, what, ten years ago? You're like, what, sixty? How does that work again? He sighs. <laughs> this is a 45 years ago. I was serving as a boatswain's assistant on the old Calamari. A legit vessel. This was before I went the pirate's way. I saw it. I saw it gulp down two frigates off the coast of Eldritch in the north. Up from the wave it come to great haze of seawater, and then it emerged as a shadow with a fiery maw of great teeth. Two pinprick orange eyes. It dashed through the two ships, and then it dipped back below the waves. There's no way it's just like a not often seen 
marine predator. Ah, <laughs> uh, this was no marine predator I've ever seen. Well, I mean... You couldn't catch it on a hook. Oh, okay. A chill that runs through you, the black of its sails. A mariner knows a ship when he sees one. And a mariner knows the dark heart of the ocean when he feels it in his own. Oh, did you feel it? Oh, I did you not? No, we were kind of uh, busy being massacred. Um, what? What did you uh, want us to do with this chuckle fuck? Yeah, you kind of, you kind of stopped his. You, he's, he's having a moment here, and you, you just want to skip past it. Yeah. The captain does straighten up, and he looks to uh, the captain of the uh, now, apparently demolished ship. What be your name and your purpose here, boy? The captain kind of has like a. The other captain has a, a, a sort of a stiff upper lip about the whole thing, and he says, My name is Aloysius Paragon of the UW ship Imperius. We were sent coordinates. We were told a pirate vessel would be, and it was, and we attacked. Now, I don't know what manner of devilry you have managed to summon about you with your. Your dark and wicked ways. I do not know what you did to my ship in my... At any rate, I'm gonna slap this guy in the back of the head. He gives you... He glares daggers at you. Your ship got eaten. We didn't do that. You guys attacked us in the dead of night. You're curs. I don't know what you want here. What I want is for the destruction of all pirate kind. But I don't think I'll be okay. seeing that. Hey, will I? Maybe when you dream, champ. Throw him in the brick. I'll deal with him later. There's the course okay. ahead to think about. Bye, Al. <laughs> the... By Al. Okay, cool. Aloysius. His name is Al now. Yeah, just awesome. Al. That's all he. That's all he retained. Just Al. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna escort this guy to the brig. Yeah, I was gonna say Biggins was going to offer, as you seem to be oh. having a conversation with the captain. That's fine too. I'm just very task oriented these days. Yeah, that's fair. You're proactive, which is unusual for adventurers who usually just let shit happen to them. Biggins, take his clothes. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> You've got it. Sounds like a good time. Like, but not in a sassy way. Give him a spare pair of pants. Just oh, like... yeah, no, we're not that kind of okay. pirate ship. Thank you. I just, it's way faster than searching him. Just take all his stuff. The Untamed <laughs> Wilds will have its vengeance, he says as he's hurried from the room. Pretty sure you guys tamed those wilds, actually. <laughs> I've heard that joke so <laughs> many times. Just joking. Uh, there's sort of like a, a clicking and clacking sound. Uh, it's it's Captain Forspoken once again looking out the back of the ship, clicking uh, his uh, his pipe sort of like in uh, across his teeth back and forth in thought. He says, "Let's run the ship about, about face, tide more handed off south." Okay. How did you know that? I was watching it. Oh, okay. It was really dark. I was on the deck. I didn't know you could just see it. I I saw it. Every Is the captain smoking? By the way. Oh yeah, he's. Hey, uh, can you stop that? Raises an eyebrow. Oh, you you know how I am with the whole smoking. Not for me. Just as long as I'm not in the you know room. I, I mean, we came into his room. I feel like that's. I know, but I'm asking now. It's just, it, okay. He gives <laughs> he gives you a hard look and he extends his hand so that the pipe is technically outside of the back window. Yeah, that counts. Thank you. Uh, and he just finger guns. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh. That makes sense in this world where flintlocks are. The is thing. anyone bringing the yep. ship about, or? Uh, oh, I, uh, hope and hope nods her head, and she actually runs out the back. What a lovely person! You know, if uh, she would have died, I would have killed everybody. <laughs> On both sides, or you know what? I don't want to know. Okay, Captain Forspoken seems to be musing to himself, and he says, "There'll be a hundred years of plunder in the belly of that beast. Merchant vessels." Galleons laden with gold. Other boats. Yeah. Corpses. Perhaps we found ourselves in the path of a certain windfall. One that could take us happily and in comfort through to the rest of our days. Yeah, well, maybe. If we don't find food soon, Captain, the rest of our days are going to be about a week from now. Didn't we send, uh, I don't even remember as much, uh, the one with the wallet? Didn't we send him to get food, too? I mentioned it while I was on deck. I don't know what this crew's up to. Hmm. I'm in this. I food and supply is down to the the barest of the bilges. I know that the situation has grown dire. Relatively, 
few merchant vessels come out this way, and larger and better equipped pirate vessels have the claim over the, uh, the bosun's boneyard and the merchant's pass. We've been rather muscled out, but we can put into hard tack, sell what we can, buy what we can, and be off after this beast. I mean, you're the captain. Aye, that I am. Yeah. Don't you forget it. I mean, I won't. Pretty hard to forget. <laughs> guy's got the big hat he does it's 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 quite nice he actually he clearly has taken the time to put it on uh yeah. in all of this he says we make for hard tack and then we fight the tide maw and claim all its belly has to offer yeah wait how do we even fight it how do you even fight it yeah like do we punch it you punch it we'll watch what we lack in bread we make up for in gunpowder and cannon yeah i didn't oh. want to have it talk about those priorities but it can it can <laughs> okay that's roughly where i wanted to leave it okay yeah question for you and this is important yeah. i think is the sword that i got from the pirate guy nicer than the sword that i already had oh hell yeah absolute okay just checking <laughs> has a little bit of a sheen and a glint of magic but uh, without spending some time with it you do not know uh, what sure. its capabilities are Love that. I should, uh, if no one else has, I'll recover the dagger as well. You go out and it's gone. This is a ship full no. of pirates. I'm not shocked. I, I prioritize. Yeah, mm -hmm. valid. The star is where you guys are at. Mm -hmm. Just the middle of fucking nowhere. A little bit, yeah. I know that I took the ship out to the place where everyone can kill us and we can't hurt anybody, but I think I make good choices. Sorry, that's as I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. No, um, that's funny and dumb. <laughs> now, I don't know what manner of devilry you have managed to summon about you with your black ways. That sounds wrong. Yeah, that was, ooh. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Your dark and wicked ways. I do not know what you oh, did to my better. ship and my crew. Yeah, all right, listen, there's some problems. We we have some problems, okay? Gosh. The whole crew's like, whoa! <laughs> it sounds like Frollo whoa. talking to Esmeralda and fucking Hunchback of Notre Dame. Jesus, yeah. Uh, there's sort of like a, a clicking and clacking sound. Uh, it's it's Captain Forspoken, once again, looking out the back of the ship. Uh, he's sort of like uh, running it's his. Like ominously. <laughs> he bursts open. He was a crab the whole time. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> captain for <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Captain, I'm so tired, guys. Is our captain saying anything? Uh, your captain is not in ready evidence. Why did I think he was out on the deck? Because I kept saying the pirate captain uh, like an idiot when I was referring to the pirate hunter cab uh, captain. Yeah. I believe uh, there is a goddess in this world um, whose clerics have the sort of uh, the sort of ethos that the best way to heal the members of their flock are to kill the enemy so they can't hurt them in the first place. Uh well, I have a different. <laughs> I have a different. Uh, I I look DD forward to I... hearing it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Shit, I gotta figure out how to do that. That makes me so sad. I'm fucking sad now. Don't be sad, please. Okay, I'll stop. Be sad. <laughs> oh.
but the golden supplies that bought that you bought but the golden supplies that bought you did not last <laughs>